Thank you, John, and thank you, Chris. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Christine Lazaretto, and I'm the current president of the California Preservation Foundation. On behalf of the organization, I'd like to officially welcome you to our 37th annual Preservation Design Awards, and of course, our first ever virtual awards. The Preservation Design Awards honor organizations and individuals whose work represents the best in preserving our architectural and cultural heritage, and furthers to a notable degree historic preservation practice in California. Tonight, we're honored to present Preservation Design Awards to 18 diverse projects, three trustee awards of excellence that recognize exemplary project work and tireless advocacy efforts, and a lifetime achievement award to a most deserving recipient who's made an indelible mark on preservation in Southern California. This year's winners reflect California's spirit of ingenuity, providing creative solutions for documenting, preserving, and re-envisioning historic places throughout our state. Award winners represent significant technical achievements, rehabilitation projects that breathe new life into a diverse array of historic places and cultural institutions, and projects that represent significant municipal investment in California's history, preserving and protecting public spaces, historic neighborhoods, and schools. Each winning project, from meticulous restoration of a stained glass dome, to cultural resources studies that help us better understand our rich history, to lovingly restored buildings from Guerneville to Palm Desert represents a significant achievement in preservation practice. And now I would like to take a moment to thank everyone who helped make tonight possible. First, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to thank our sponsors. Their generosity makes possible not only this awards program, but all of our educational and advocacy efforts throughout the year. We all send out a very heartfelt thank you to everyone who supports and continues to support CPF. The Preservation Design Awards are the culmination of months of preparation and hard work by the applicants, jury, and CPF staff. The interest in this program grows each year, and this year's 18 winners represent a fraction of the projects nominated for review. For all of their hard work, and in particular their extraordinary ability to creatively and enthusiastically tackle all of the challenges thrown their way, I would like to thank our remarkable staff. Cindy Heitzman, Executive Director, John Haber, the Field Services Director, and Chris Madrid French, Development and Marketing Director. We would also like to thank and recognize the jurors who devoted a lot of time and a lot of talent to this year's program. Wayne Chang of Structural Focus, Kelly Comross from Kelly Comross Landscape Architecture, Stephanie Kingsnorth from Pfeiffer Partners, Rosa Lowinger of Rosa Lowinger and Associates, Kelly Sutherland McLeod, Kelly Sutherland McLeod Architecture, Bridget Maley from Architecture and History, Steve Milam from the Walt Disney Company, and Sam Ragsdale from Matt Construction. And you'll be hearing more from the jury throughout tonight's program. I would also like to thank our featured speaker, Eric Bricker, who will join us later with a special presentation about the intersection of preservation and the power of image. And with that, I'm going to officially turn things over to Andrew Wolfram and Bill Schaefer, who not only chair our jury, but serve as co-chairs for the event and will be your hosts for the evening. And I just wanna say thank you to Andrew and Bill for all of your commitment to this program and for everything you do to make tonight's possible. Thanks, Christine. I'm Andrew Wolfram and I'm delighted to be one of Design Program's co-chairs. We have an exciting evening for tonight showcasing some of California's best preservation projects. I'm Bill Schaefer and as CPF Design Awards Program Co-Chair, I'm thrilled that tonight we will also be honoring leaders in the preservation field, individuals and organizations whose groundbreaking work in preservation has had positive results throughout our state. So let's move on with our show and get some behind the scenes intel on the jury decision making process. I think that's my cue. That's your cue, John. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes intel. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello from San Francisco. My name is Bridget Maley, and I'm an architectural historian, a historic preservation consultant, and a writer. My name is Kelly Comras. I'm a fellow of the American Society of Landscape Architects and the principal of the firm I founded in 1986, Kelly Commerce Landscape Architecture. I'm Kelly Sutherland McLeod, and I'm an architect. My name is Rosa Lowinger. I'm the president and chief conservator of RLA Conservation of Art and Architecture. 
Hi, I'm Sam Ragsdale. I'm a senior project manager with Matt Construction. Hello, my name is Stephanie Kingsnorth. I am a partner and an architect at Pfeiffer Partners Architects in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Steve Milam, Vice President for Design and Delivery for Disney Corporate Real Estate. My name is Wayne Cheng. I'm a structural engineer and principal in structural focus. The most enjoyable aspect of being a juror was the opportunity to work with a variety of professionals from complementary backgrounds. The judging process benefited from expertise in fields of landscape architecture, construction, cultural resources, architecture, materials restoration, and others, and that process imbued our final decision with nuance and complexity. I had two favorite parts of being a juror learning about all of the great projects that are out there and collaborating with my fellow jurors on the selection committee. The most enjoyable aspect of being a jury is being is getting the opportunity to see how the design profession take what was once a jewel of our culture and polish it to be an even more special treasure for our future generation to enjoy. Historic preservation is important to me because architecture makes our lives better and preserving great architecture tells a bit about who we are, what's important to us, and where we are headed. Historic preservation makes it possible to understand and appreciate the value of the land as it has been and the people who have come before us. Once we learn to see and understand our historic resources, we can appreciate the value of what we have. Heritage conservation is not only about the preservation of buildings, it is about the preservation of tradition, culture, history, and place. Without knowledge and understanding of our past, we have no context in which to make decisions today that will impact generations to come. Historic preservation is important to me because as an immigrant to the United States, someone who was born in a historic city of Havana, Cuba, I know that the buildings that were built before we moved to places are what gives us a sense of our identity. And I relate to the places that I've lived throughout the world through the historic places that I know are there. California Preservation Foundation is important because it is our statewide organization that advocates for the preservation, rehabilitation, and adaptive reuse and continued stewardship of California's significant uh, historic resources. CPF's advocacy efforts are imperative to programs like the recently passed SB 451, the California State Historic Tax Credit. Congratulations, CPF, on a job well done in shepherding this important legislation for California's future. CPF reaches communities statewide through advocacy and education. The organization allows our state to have a voice, which is especially important to communities that do not have strong local preservation support. The more of us that stand together, the louder our voice can be. The California Preservation Foundation is important because we all need champions and they are a great champion for a great cause. I think CPF is so important uh, in the preservation world um, for two, two key reasons. One is they bring visibility to these projects and the wonderful preservation work that's happening across the state. And two, they provide tools, great tools and resources for owners, designers, consultants, contractors, you name it. Um, to help with their preservation projects and, and to, to really help continue and build just this wonderful volume of preservation work that's happening in the state. People's Choice of Words, where your vote counts. This year's program features 18 winning projects. These designs can be found around the state and in your communities. They represent schools, baseball fields, wineries, hotels, housing, and even an old bank. You'll see all these projects awarded during our show. You can also check our website at the address in the chat box to see a list of winners. Be sure to be here at 7.05 p.m. for your chance to vote. 
We'll be using the poll feature in Zoom so everyone has a chance to let us know your favorite winning project. And now, Bill, it's your turn. Please introduce Thanks. the award category. Thank you, Andrew. This year, we received Preservation Design Award submittals from every corner of the great state of California. The submittals are nominated by the public in one of eight categories. And this year, the winning projects were selected within five of those eight categories. Craftsman Preservation Technology. Cultural Resource Studies. Interpretive Exhibits. Rehabilitation and restoration. Sometimes a project will stand out, striving for and achieving a higher standard. These projects have been awarded the Trustees Award for Excellence. This award is at the recommendation of the jury with approval by the Board of Trustees. These projects set an example for others to follow in the future, either for the quality of work or because they set a higher social standard. And now, for our, for our first set of awards will be presented by Andrew Wolfram. John, that's your cue for the first set. Oh, I think we're going to be um, playing a word from the sponsors first. Is that right? No. Nope. First set of awards. Uh, we're going to play a word from the sponsors first. Okay. Our firm is about 50 people. We're in Sonoma County. We specialize in public projects, mostly K-12. We do some university work, but we also have a, a bit of commercial work. These are such dedicated people. Teachers are the most remarkable professionals I've ever worked with, and it's not just because I'm married to one. Education is a specialized client, just like a home is or a hospital. There are traditions and there are methods by which they do things. There are ways that we as architects can help them do their work better. And we start off with very big Programming is hugely important in a public, uh, a public project and that hugely influences the design work we do. The one thing about teachers uh, is they are very, very, very good at what they do in the way they've been doing it, some teachers, for years. My job as an architect is to understand that, but also to show them alternatives. There may be another way to do what you've done for 15 years that might even work better. Maybe open their minds up to look at different ways of, of fulfilling their educational objectives, make spaces that support them better. Okay, and now we can begin the first set of awards programs. Uh, so we will start momentarily here. Our first award is for the conservation of the stained glass dome at Resurrection Church in Oakland in the Craftsmanship and Preservation Technology category. 
Domes typically go up, but this astonishing one was designed to be inverted. The award-winning work included structural strengthening, repair, and rebuilding of the 12 stained glass panels that make up this 10 foot wide dome. Not only was the technological aspect of the project impressive, but it illustrates the commitment of the congregation to use the building as it was originally intended as a place of worship and to invest in the preservation of this um, important Oakland landmark. The next award goes to J. Littleton Ballpark in the Cultural Resources category. The J. Littleton Ballpark Historic Structures Report chronicles the history, significance, and condition of a real community gem, a 1930s ballpark in the city of Ontario. Throwing a pitch to the future, the HSR provides a comprehensive management plan for the park stewardship. The jurors discussed the consultants' fees were most likely modest. However, this HSR is comprehensive and a commendable effort by the city to identify this resource and start an informed course for restoration. This landmark speaks to community, tradition, and place. Once the historic structure report was completed, we've handed it off to our public works, who's maintains the, the ballpark and is responsible for budgeting. And they've already started um, following up on some of the recommendations that GPA had put in there. So we're really excited about it and thrilled to uh, receive the award. Thank you. Our next award is for Sacramento Historic District Plans in the Cultural Resources category. It's also in the category of, this was a lot of work. Sacramento's 27 locally listed historic districts, which include more than 2,800 parcels, are now comprehensively surveyed and documented, and ready to adapt to change if needed, as the historic district plans provide design standards tailored for each district. The project represents the culmination of years of dedication to comprehensively survey, update documentation, and provide design standards that are specifically tailored for 27 of Sacramento's locally listed historic districts. The scope and impact of this project is particularly impressive. The next award is for the Bradbury House in the restoration category. Remember Cary Grant in Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House, that endless and hapless construction project? Luckily, this award-winning 20-year construction project and seismic upgrade using distinctive preservation technology to preserve the house's historic fabric has a much happier ending. The 20-year voluntary seismic upgrade of the Bradbury House in Santa Monica creatively utilized seismic technology to preserve the structure's historic fabric to meet historic safety standards under the California Historical Building Code. The result is a carefully crafted incarnation of exactly what the building should have been. It is an honor to participate in this awards event sponsored by the California Preservation Foundation. Many times, what we discovered within the adobe walls did not match our carefully laid out plans. But we dedicated ourselves to respecting the structure and to getting it right. As a result of this careful dedication of all those working on the project, the Bradbury House will have the very, very long life that it deserves. Thank you so much. Thank you, CPF. Thank you, CPF. Yeah. Our next award is for Futuro in the restoration category. If we had a coolness category, this would be the clear winner. It's the first all-structural fiberglass-reinforced plastic movable house, now lovingly restored 
because fiberglass does not usually last forever. After an amazing 130-mile road trip, it's the only Futuro in California to have obtained an occupancy permit. The passion and effort that was involved in getting that project restored, transported to a mountaintop, and installed to meet code was incredible. And the idea of landing that spaceship on a mountaintop was inspired. The next award is for Sequoia Field, a documentary, in the Interpretive Exhibits category. An engaging documentary that presents the past, present, and future of this 1940s Tulare County airfield, which served as a World War II pilot training school, an old age home, a detention facility, a farm, and a general aviation airport. If those who were involved in it hadn't had that passion, hadn't had that love, for the place, there was really a high probability that it would have become forgotten. So by doing this, they have put it out there and proudly state, this is Sequoia Field, pay attention and preservation of it really does matter. Uh, so I am Aaron Bach, I'm the uh, planning director with the Tulare County Resource Management Agency. And I just like to say uh, how grateful the county is to uh, receive this award. Um, we did, and we always have uh, cherished the Sequoia Airfield, and I'd just like to say thank you. I think that's our last uh, award in that category, and I think one of the things that um, you definitely didn't necessarily see in the behind the scenes intel, which because we tried to give you a very polite version of the jury uh, deliberations is there's often a lot of very heated discussions uh, that are fascinating because you see great projects and different jury members have very, very strong opinions about which are the winning projects. So Bill, didn't you think that was kind of one of the, the best parts of the jury deliberations is that back and forth uh, between the different jury members it is. I, I think that that's actually one of the most enjoyable parts of it, actually, is really hearing different um, people's perspectives on the various projects. And um, I find it most enjoyable because I learn perspectives that I might not have had, you know, going into it. Um, what was interesting, I mean, Andrew, you and I have participated in chairing the jury um, in years past. How was it for you this year doing it remotely, trying to do it with Zoom? Actually, I think it worked really well. It was quite uh, an efficient process. You didn't get some of that kind of personal dialogue, but I think people tended to be a little bit uh, quicker with their, with their time um, in terms of their comments. Because sometimes when you're all together in a room, there can be lots of digressions. And so we didn't have quite as much of that. So it looks like, John, are you ready for us to start the next set? Yeah, so I was thinking uh, before we start the next set, just to give you a little behind the scenes info, I had not converted the two uh, design award winners to a video format. So I have to uh, give me about two to three minutes. And I think the part of the schedule where we can bump forward is the bloopers because I think everybody will love that. Okay. Well, do we want to uh, step into that right now then? Yeah, so you should see the uh, video getting started here on your screen. Are you ready? Yep, yep. sounds great. Congratulations, CPF, on a job well done in shepherding this important legislation for, for Cal... Blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> see that over again? <laughs> Go again. Okay, are you going to have bloopers? <laughs> yes, probably. Oh my god. Okay, let me do that one more time. It worked. I, I sent you an email and said it worked. So what I did was I took Bridget's, I viewed it, I put it in a folder. From going forward, I'll save them to the cloud. It might be easier. I mean, since I'm here in the office, I could also put it on the share drive, so. It says you're recording right now, Cindy. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> uh -huh. My favorite winning project, let me start over. <clears throat> My favorite winning project was, as many, uh, no, let's start over, sorry. 
<laughs> my favorite winning project was the future uh, how do you say futuro project is that is that how you say it futuro my favorite winning project was the futuro project it was an incredible act of passion and an effort to get that sphere uh no 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 the passion and effort that was involved in getting that project restored okay, let me see. my favorite project was the futuro project the passion and effort that was involved Ah, uh, that's not good. All right. One more time. <laughs> uh. Sacred spaces have a special energy to them. They're built often with a view towards an inner life. Tiger puppet that I used to have that when my son was a little boy, my son's 34 now, and I used to just literally, you know, engage him with this tiger all the time. And now I'm doing it with my grandson and he's totally in as well. I love it. You, you, you have total permission to do something with that tiger. Oh, very good. <laughs> Support your local <laughs> nonprofit. Well, he has his own, he has his own voice. He, he does not speak in my voice. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Cindy, there's a there's a blooper right now. I just got to tell you, there's Superman flying to the right of you. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, John, sure, so I don't think I have a Superman thing. Uh, you right? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, well, that, the, so yeah. The, so now at the awards, we can say special guest Superman. A Superman <laughs> come flying in, special appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, John, are you there? Always fun to see what doesn't quite go right when you're trying to produce an awards program remotely, remotely and via Zoom. So um, I do want to take a moment to welcome everybody who's joining us for the annual California Preservation Design Awards. We're so glad you could join us. Stay tuned for our People's Choice Award voting which is coming up soon. And now we're ready for part two of the awards and we'll be playing those momentarily. The next series of awards is for rehabilitation. And the first award goes to the historic Bank of Guerneville building. An architectural anchor in the center of Stumptown, the Bank of Guerneville building had fallen into disrepair after sitting empty for 30 years. Now a community anchor, it's a gathering place and destination for locals and tourists alike. Uh, I loved it because it showed that your project doesn't need to be big and, and square footage or big in budget. Um, to be successful. Uh, they found super creative ways to address challenges they found during the course of, of the project, including some significant zoning challenges. Uh, they incorporated artifacts that they found in the course of the project, and the, the final result was just a remarkable re rehabilitation uh, that they were able to do on a really small budget and create a wonderful space that's a gathering place for the community. Thank you to the judges for recognizing this project as an award winner in the rehabilitation category during this year's Preservation Design Awards. The building was empty for 30 years and is now repurposed to house an amazing collective of small businesses. I owe this award to all the people that helped me, but there just isn't enough time to go through the list. Please check out the CPF website for everyone's names, as well as visit GurnvilleBankClub.com to learn more about the building, the businesses, and its rehabilitation. Thanks again. The next award goes to the Livermore Railroad Depot. After the railroad moved away, this charming depot sat alone. Now relocated next to the tracks, the rehabilitated 120-year-old rail depot once again links the city of Livermore to the Bay Area 
and also houses retail and a museum. The project included restoration of both building exterior and interiors, returning the depot to its original use as a ticket office serving a rail system. Not only has the building been saved, it is back in service with context and relevance. The next award goes to the rejuvenation of a historic powerhouse. Once the power source for San Francisco's historic Pier 70, a 19th century shipyard, the now rehabilitated powerhouse retains its most important character-defining features while being repurposed as a 21st century commercial workspace. So the thing that stood out uh, for the historic powerhouse restoration uh, was just the integration of the historic features and materials with the contemporary use. Uh, the inclusion of the original industrial equipment like the compressors, the cranes, really helped provide a context and character for the space that just paired really nicely with the, uh, the, the contemporary use as a commercial office space. And the result is just such a, a lively and dramatic office space that provides a great new life for a very unique building. The next award goes to the Robert Frost Auditorium. Still innovative 70 years later, the Robert Frost Auditorium, which employed a sculptural thin shell concrete structure, has been brought into the 21st century as a state-of-the-art performing arts and learning facility, preserving the landmark for future generations of students and patrons. The structure itself is so amazingly beautiful. Talk about a modern lightweight concrete thin shell element that the engineering team just went to town to preserve. Everything they did was so well thought through in terms of introducing the acoustical controls, the mechanical controls, the architectural team for inserting new spaces behind the, the actual theater space. It came together wonderfully. From the exterior, you would never know anyone had done anything. And from the inside, it's a whole new experience absolutely the way to insert new technology, which is removable into an amazing modern structure. The next award goes to St. Joseph's Church. Deteriorated and abandoned since the Loma Prieta earthquake, St. Joseph's Church has been rehabilitated for new and exciting use in the arts. Seismic strengthening, Accessibility upgrades and significant renovations maintain and celebrate the impressive historic features. Significant architectural details, including the stained glass windows, marble vestibule, and decorative plaster work were meticulously restored. Sacred spaces have a special energy and beauty to them. They were often built with a view towards an inner life, the spiritual life, and in the modern world where we are not as bound to traditional religion, many of these buildings become obsolete. It's sad to see them fall to the wrecking ball. Creative spaces and the arts now often fill that spiritual need of secular American communities. To see St. Joseph's Church, a building of such grandeur, transformed in this manner, is a fitting and beautiful way to revamp its spiritual humanistic content for the modern world. was the last one. So um, coming back, a little change of order here, but uh, I'd like to reintroduce Andrew Wolfram, who is going to take us through the next set of awards. Our next award is for the Belle View in the rehabilitation category. This project proves that affordable housing and preservation can happily go hand in hand. After suffering 10 years of vacancy, decay, and structural instability, the rehabilitation of the Bellevue has brought this important landmark in the heart of downtown Sacramento back to life. 
Most developers would have passed as soon as they heard of the large number of bats living in the building, not to mention the guano or the structural issues. But this group stayed the course and restored a key piece of downtown Sacramento's history. Well done, team. The next award is for the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. Seeing a show at the Greek is a classic Angelino experience. And now it's even better. Four phases of off-season projects have improved the visitor and performer experience, upgraded systems, and repaired and rehabilitated the theater's historic features. The Greek Theater in Los Angeles is a commemorable historical rehabilitation project that spent over five years and was executed four phases during off season. This iconic structure is beloved by Angelino and is keeping theater open for performance was important to the community. The project demonstrated that while the show must go on, historical rehabilitation can be part as well. Our next award is for the Hacienda at Scribe Winery in Sonoma in the rehabilitation category. This compelling project is driven by the overarching concept of storytelling from which the winery draws its name. The work involved a careful uncovering of the building's many historic layers. Where appropriate, distinct new layers were introduced, providing legibility and superimposition between old and new. Rural California is a very special place. The history of our growing regions, especially the wineries, are unique American locations unlike any other in the country. I love the way this hacienda reconstruction and rehabilitation restored not only the structure and details of the 1915 house, but also used it as a means of preserving the history of the building itself and its relationship to that landscape. It upholds, if you will, the terroir of historic rural places in the best way possible. The next award is for the Miles C. Bates House in Palm Desert in the rehabilitation category. With its dramatic roller coaster roof, the Wave House was vacant, derelict, and foundering in the hot desert sun. Now lovingly rehabilitated as an event center venue and guest accommodation, its patented roof system is once again the star of the show. The jury was compelled by the story of the Miles C. Bates House rehabilitation. Located in Palm Desert, and designed by Walter S. White in 1954, the house had suffered severe alterations and deterioration. The project saved this landmark from further destruction, restored the innovative building design, and reactivated it as an event location now available for public use. Our next award is for the Earth Cafe in the rehabilitation category. Sometimes the great parts of historic buildings get so covered up that no one even remembers there's something worth saving. That's the story of the Earth Cafe, a project which rehabilitated a highly altered building and revealed its original character and historic roots, turning it into the anchor of downtown Orange's historic district. There were so many terrific projects, I had a difficult time choosing amongst them all. But the restoration of the Earth Cafe in the city of Orange embodies many of the elements I think are so important in architectural restoration. The age and architectural character of the Italian Revival building were treated with great sensitivity, and the interior work complemented that character very well. This project has stayed with me as exceptionally well done. On behalf of Spectra Company and Earth Cafe's owners, 
uh, Shalom and Dila Berkman, we want to thank CPF for this award. And I do want to thank the Berkmans as well, because uh, as with any pr preservation project, it really takes a dedicated owner who's, who believes in historic preservation and really uh, wants to invest uh, to make it uh, successful. And, uh, and it was great an opportunity to collaborate with the uh, project's design architect, SF Jones Architects. With any project, it's a collaboration between a dedicated owner, a dedicated contractor, and a de dedicated group of design professionals that allow us to pull off uh, the successful product that we did. And thank you very much. Congratulations to our last group of award winners. These projects show the incredible variety of preservation all across California. And now Naomi Mirolio, CPS Vice President for Programs, will present the first Trustees Award for Excellence. That's the first Trustees Award for Excellence. Hello, I'm Naomi Morolio, Vice President of Programs for the California Preservation Foundation. Each year, CPF's Board of Trustees has the option of selecting award winners for special recognition. This year's winners demonstrated excellence for the innovative responses to some of the greatest challenges facing preservation in the 21st century, sustainability and resiliency. Each project strongly demonstrates preservation's role in tackling these important challenges using both creativity and a commitment to a high standard of execution. I'm speaking to you today from the site of the historic Alameda High School, the first of this year's Trustees Award for Excellence winners. From a structural engineering perspective, the historical Alameda High School rehabilitation and seismic upgrade is a great success of achieving historical preservation and meeting the stringent requirement from the Dis Division of State Architect. It demonstrates that achieving higher seismic performance can be well concerted with historical preservation. As one of the city's remaining, but not yet rehabilitated historic treasures, the shuttered historic Alameda High School was an eyesore and a fading beacon of the city's history. Designed by Bay Area architect Carl Werner, the 100,000 square foot building has long been recognized as an iconic civic landmark and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The imposing two and three story neoclassical revival group of structures fills an entire block of Central Avenue, adjoining the city's historic central business district. The buildings were unused for over 40 years, with the public and local officials supporting rehabilitation of the building to serve a new generation of students. School and community input were a stated goal by the district and a part of the architect selection process. Quatroki Kwok Architects led school and community vision sessions to develop the project's program and explore how 21st century learning environments could work in an older building. With their large classrooms, high ceilings, abundant daylight, and space for new data and infrastructure, all agreed the historic buildings provided tremendous opportunities. Resolving the school's structural instability while mitigating visual impacts on the historic buildings were critical to both the school district and the community. A particular challenge in restoring the historic Alameda High School was addressing its structural instability. As a nearly 100-year-old school with poor lateral resistance and sited on liquefiable soils, earthquakes were the building's greatest threat. The team also worked closely with the Alameda Architectural Preservation Society to renovate and restore 350 historic wood windows and 6,000 glass panes while preserving original wood sills and sashes. The entire exterior of the three buildings were repaired and repainted to match the original colors adding to the repaired original exterior columns, the terrazzo stairs, and bronze and copper detailing throughout. The renovated and upgraded 21st century learning spaces include 37 classrooms, 11 science labs, administrative offices, accessible restrooms, a faculty lounge, and several meeting rooms. 
And today, students at Alameda High School can now enjoy a revitalized and seismically retrofitted environment that balances old and new. Hi, I'm Mark Kotroki of Kotroki Quark Architects. I'm Anna Wells from Kotroki Quark Architects. Chris Delcor with Costa Engineers. I'm Chris Warner with ZFA. And I'm Peter Kohlenbrander with Omani and Meyer, Electrical and Lighting Engineers. On behalf of all of us and Lathrop Construction, thank you so much for this remarkable honor for a project that means so much to us. Again, as a member of the CPF Board of Trustees, I have the distinct honor of recognizing the second winner of the Trustees Award for Excellence in Rehabilitation. I'm talking to you today from the Sacramento Municipal Utility District Headquarters, which stands today fully rehabilitated and in active use by the original occupants. The fact that this rehabilitation took the original premise, twisted it and turned it around, and yet preserved this building with new technology that minimized the use of energy, highlighting and showcasing how that could be done with this tremendous aspect of preservation was just stunning and noteworthy unto itself. Completed in 1960, the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, or SMUD, headquarters building instantly became an international style modernist icon for the Sacramento region. The project received recognition through several national and international publications, including the New York Times. Use of an active sun shading system, carefully considered solar orientation, timeless and durable building materials, and a simple yet flexible floor plan arrangement showed this building's design was ahead of its time. After 60 years of continuous use, an extensive rehabilitation brought this landmark mid-century modern building into the 21st century, ensuring relevance for generations to come. Rehabilitation planning of the four-story, 131 and a half thousand square foot facility commenced in 2014 with the commissioning of an extensive design team. A careful, carefully considered addition in the building's core allowed for greater increased daylighting and access to views. A central enclosed stair and a mechanical shaft was replaced with a large open stair for enhanced vertical circulation and transparency between wings. A creative and innovative luminous ceiling system in the lobby that was previously removed was restored. In addition, other features of the building's original design were carefully conserved and preserved, including the tile mural called Water City made of Italian glass mosaic tile by internationally renowned artist Wayne Tebow was carefully cleaned and regrouted. Missing tiles were replaced. Lighting of this mural is critically important. New high efficiency LED lighting replaced the original strip fluorescent light. This building is clad extensively in sanfordized aluminum panels. Sanfordizing is a lot like anodizing, but it's not available today. Because of this, and because it would be difficult to match the color and the finish, this material was carefully cleaned and repaired. Where replacement was needed, a sympathetic material was installed, carefully delineated. This building is clad on the exterior with precast concrete panels. After many years of water intrusion, they were covered with blemishes and rust stains. Because of the danger of removing them for cleaning, they were all carefully cleaned in place. Perimeter walkway. The ground level base of the building consisted of an unground terrazzo finish that also acted as a roofing material over portions of the basement. Significant water intrusion problems over time pointed to the need for replacement. The resulting solution incorporated a complete water protection system that is visually compatible while keeping the tile mural intact. Open office space. A critical part of the original design included use of an overarching five-foot grid. This grid provided modularity and a sense of order in the space that was lost over time. 
Use of a modular wall system and careful attention to ceiling and lighting layouts restores the character-defining features. Unobtrusive seismic upgrades, an extensive community outreach effort, removal of hazardous materials, incorporation of new accessibility features, and the introduction of energy-efficient lighting and mechanical systems all contributed to the sustainability and resiliency of this project. We congratulate the SMUD headquarters team for their commitment and integrity and look forward to enjoying the Sacramento icon for years to come. These projects are just so inspiring. And now we're thrilled to welcome director and producer Eric Bricker as tonight's featured speaker, speaking on preservation and the power of image. Eric made his directorial debut with the documentary feature, Visual Acoustics, The Modernism of Julia Schulman, narrated by Dustin Hoffman. Visual Acoustics celebrates the life and work of renowned photographer Julia Schulman. The film garnered many awards in its festival run, including Audience Award for Best Documentary Feature at the Palm Springs International Film Festival and the Austin Film Festival. Visual Acoustics screened around the world before going on the air on the Sundance Channel, the Netflix, iTunes, and you can currently catch it on Amazon Prime. Illumination, a documentary on Airstream travel trailers, is Eric's second feature length film, and it's slated for a summer 2021 release, and I can't wait for that. Eric is also currently working on Killingsworth, a narrative film based on the life and work of architect Edward Killingworth. Welcome, Eric, to CPF Design Awards. Thank you, Andrew. And hello, California Preservation Foundation. It's a pleasure to be here tonight with you all. Um, Yes, my name is Eric Bricker, and as Andrew mentioned, I created the film Visual Acoustics, The Modernism of Julius Shulman, um, and I met Julius, actually, I, I was thinking about the idea of the, the power of images. We were talking about images and preservation, and as I started to think more about that topic, I was thinking about how my entire life, the trajectory of my life was changed by needing some images. Um, I needed some 19, this was back in, in 1999, I needed some black and white photographs of San Francisco. And I met Julius Schulman and he invited me over to his house, um, wanted to see if he had anything that I could use for a project that I was working on. And he was on the telephone. I, I walked into his office and I saw this book. I don't know if you can, well, here we go, that book. Well. You're getting glimpses of it. It's a Tashin book. It's um, Julius Schulman, Architecture and its Photography. And he was on the telephone and I was flipping through this book and I didn't know, really know Julius and I didn't know his work. And something happened when I was looking at this book. Um, it was pretty magical. I feel like I was actually kind of like, it was like a portal into another world. And two years later, I proposed to Julius doing a documentary on Julius, on his archive of photographs, which is now, which now resides at the Getty Research Institute um, and the architects and the architecture. And Julius said, yes. So we ended up creating the documentary. Um, and I know we have a clip from it, which we want to go ahead and play. So John, if you can go ahead and roll that clip and um, we'll be right back and talk more. As modernism slowly fell out of fashion, many masterworks were neglected, even destroyed. Schulman, however, remained a faithful steward to the modernist ideal. Ultimately, his vast photographic archive would become an indispensable resource as public taste turned enthusiastically back toward modernism. We weren't looking to buy a house in Palm Springs. We were looking to see this house. The house had been on the market for four years, and it needed a lot of work. The real estate agent, as she was showing us the property, kept reinforcing the idea that you could buy this for land value and build whatever you want. So I asked her, do you really think that somebody would, would take this house down? And she said, well, they could. It was really at that moment that I, I knew we had to get this house. 
I sought out Julius and he was immediately excited. He probably had 25 pictures that he could show me that day, but he had about 80 pictures that he had never printed that he printed for us. And without those pictures, we, we couldn't have restored the house. There we go. Um, I'm looking in the, in the chat there and, um, and somebody, it looks like Anthea Hartig said, Beth, yes, there's Beth Harris. And, you know, there's, we pulled that clip um, as an illustration for one way by which Julius's archive was used. And that was having actual photographic documentation to refer to in order to um, preserve and restore, in this case, the Kaufman House, which I think is on the market right now. So as soon as we, as soon as you finish up the, the evening and get on wherever you need to go, call your agent because it's on the market. Um, but I was thinking about, there's so much more, there's so much depth, I think, to and importance to capturing images. And one of the things that I've learned in creating documentary films is quite often people are capturing things and not with the intention of preserving an image and passing it on to successive generations, but just they might happen to just take a quick snapshot. It might even be, for instance, like a family member. Um, and then years later, maybe that family member has passed on or you realize that, hey, we lived in a sig an architecturally significant home and we didn't realize it at the time, but now the lenses of history have changed and we have all this documentation of this house that we lived in. So I guess where I'm going with this is quite often, um, we don't realize the value of some of the things that we're capturing. And I certainly saw this with Airstream. Um, Andrew had just mentioned that I completed an Airstream documentary and for years, Airstream had an entire archive of photos and films just kind of sitting in a room in a building that they didn't even really use. And it's been in, within the last, I think it was about seven years ago when they actually realized, wow, we have an incredible treasure trove of materials from which are of value now for a number of different reasons. But one of them, um, and one of the main reasons is for trailer restoration um, as vintage travel trailers are so, becoming so popular now. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to mention, um, I did want to, I wanted to also I think acknowledge everybody, not only the California Preserv Preservation Foundation, but everybody that's involved in preservation, because I, I am aware of how much blood, sweat, and tears, and time, and capital, and all the things that go into preservation. And as somebody who loves architecture, and whenever I go into, when I'm invited into a historically, an architecturally significant building, and I get to spend time in there, I'm very appreciative of what it takes to have those doors open and have that structure available to me and other people who get to experience it. So in wrapping it up, I just want to say um, thank you. I feel like I am a beneficiary of everything that you all do and I really appreciate it. Great, thank you, Eric, for that really fascinating presentation. And now it's the moment you've been waiting for, your chance to vote for the People's Choice Award. You'll see all 18 projects on the screen the next two minutes with a name and a number. John will post a voting pool on the screen. You can move that screen off to the side so it's not in your way. And please vote for one project. Now, because of the limits of our Zoom interface, you're gonna find that we've had to put the projects into two groups and you'll need to click a button in both groups, one for your project and then the button in the other group that says you're selecting a project in the group that your choice was in. So sorry for that little complication there, but you need to click in both groups in order to be able to submit. We're gonna leave the poll open for two minutes. We'll also paste a link in the chat if you wanna visit uh, the project pages on our website to learn a little bit more about the projects. In the meantime, enjoy some nice music and don't forget to vote, vote now, and don't forget to vote on November 3rd.
I'm just a lonesome traveler, a great historical bum. Highly educated from history I come. I built the Rock of Ages, it was in the year of one. That's about the biggest thing man has ever done. I was in the Garden of Eden, it was in the year of two. Join the Apple Pickers Union, I always paid my dues. I'm the one who signed the contract to raise the rising sun. That's about the biggest thing the man has ever done. I was straw boss on the pyramid and the Tower of Babel too. I opened up the ocean, let the migrant children through. Fought a million battles and I never lost one. And that's about the biggest thing the man's ever done. I was in the revolution when we set this country free It was me and a couple of engines that dumped the Boston Tea I won the Battle of Valley Forge and the Battle of Bully Run And that's about the biggest thing the man has ever done I'm just a lonesome traveler, a great historical bone Highly educated from history I come I built the Rock of Ages It was in the year of one And that's about the biggest thing That man has ever done So it's your last uh, few seconds here to vote You've got about 15 seconds to vote, so please vote now. Uh, this is also a good time to work on your absentee ballot, so you can uh, work on those as well. Propositions, those kinds of things. But you've got just a few more seconds to vote. And now, I think we have, uh, I think we have a winner. I've heard we've had a winner. I'm going to grab the envelope here. And from our winner, the winner is the Futuro House. Futuro House is our winner for the People's Choice Award. So thank you. Congratulations, Futuro House. Keep an eye out for your special prize certificate that's going to be coming in the mail. I understand Alameda was a very close second. So thank you all for voting. And now to our president, Christine Lazzaretto, to introduce the president's awards. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you for the, the enthusiasm, enthusiasm that you uh, pronounced my last name. And I want to just thank all of you again for staying with us tonight as we uh, navigate this new digital era. Um, our next award this evening is the President's Award for Advocacy. I'm very pleased to present this award to the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation in recognition of all of their work to protect historic resources in the desert community. What became the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation was originally founded in 1997 by a group of concerned citizens who believed that a better appreciation of Palm Springs architecture and history could be achieved through education. Since that time, the organization has worked tirelessly to educate and advocate for Palm Springs' unique historic and architectural legacy. In recent years, their advocacy has helped to save Hugh Captor's Takeets Plaza, which went from slated for demolition to a 2019 CPF award-winning rehabilitation project. They successfully advocated to save the Town and Country Center designed by Paul R. Williams and A. Quincy Jones, which was also proposed for demolition as part of a downtown redevelopment plan and for years faced an uncertain future. In June of 2019, PSPF presented a $50,000 grant to the city of Palm Springs toward the restoration of the 1936 Plaza Theater, which serves as the center of cultural life in the city. PSPF is also responsible for the designation of dozens, probably dozens and dozens of historic resources from Palm Springs early history through the recent past recognizing not only well-known architectural projects, but remnants of the city's early history and resources with important cultural associations. A very small sampling of their most recent nominations includes the ruins of the 1920 Avery Edwin Field Cabin, 
Thomas O'Donnell's golf course from the 1920s and O'Donnell's inspiration point from the 1930s. They've also nominated significant pre-war residences and properties associated with significant, significant people and important architects from the post-World War II era. The organization has published numerous books documenting Palm Springs architectural legacy and providing valuable research on some of the underappreciated desert modernists. Recent publications include The Modern Architecture of Hugh Michael Kaptur, who is the last living member of the Palm Springs Modern School of Architects. PSPF was also the lead sponsor of an exhibition on Kaptur's work at the Palm Springs Art Museum Architecture and Design Center. This just represents a very small glimpse of the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation's ongoing efforts to recognize and protect important historic, architectural, and cultural resources in Palm Springs. On behalf of CPF, I am very pleased to present this award to them this evening. So congratulations to everyone at PSPF. And now I would like to welcome Jeff Kors, the mayor of Palm Springs, who's prepared a special message for this evening. The Palm Springs Preservation Foundation is a truly transformational organization in the city of Palm Springs. Their advocacy to preserve our historic and wonderful architecture has made a tremendous difference in what our city looks like and how we value our architectural heritage and history. As a member of the city council over the last five years, the favorite thing that I look forward to are the nomination reports that the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation presents to the city council when they're asking for class one designation. They're thoughtful, they're thorough, they have great history and photos, and they serve as a great educational asset in addition to being very persuasive in our voting in support of the nominations they put forward. So congratulations again to everyone at the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation. And for our final award of the evening, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I have the distinct honor to present a Lifetime Achievement Award to Susan N. Mossman of Pasadena Heritage. The Lifetime Achievement Award is the most prestigious honor bestowed by the California Preservation Foundation, recognizing individuals who've made an outstanding contribution to the cause of preservation. In 1978, Sue began volunteering at the fledgling preservation nonprofit marking the start of a more than 40 year career in historic preservation. Sue was the second employee at Pasadena Heritage hired when the organization was in its infancy and she held every position on the staff before becoming executive director in 1994. Under Sue's leadership, Pasadena Heritage grew to be the second largest nonprofit in California and it's considered one of the most successful historic preservation organizations in the West. Sue's so leadership and dedication have been instrumental in the growth of the organization, its myriad accomplishments, and the high regard in which Pasadena Heritage is held by preservationists, but also by city and community leaders. It's hard to do justice to Sue's career in just a few minutes, and even more difficult to choose highlights from her incredible list of accomplishments. She worked to save the Colorado Street Bridge, led efforts to save Edward Jarrell Stone's Stewart Pharmaceutical Building, halted plans that would have completely obscured Welton Beckett's Bullock's Pasadena, defeated the potential conversion of the National Historic Landmark Rose Bowl Stadium into a new NFL venue, nominated hundreds of buildings and sites for historic designation, worked tirelessly to help defeat the proposed 710 freeway extension through Pasadena's oldest neighborhoods, she helped secure the donation of the Madison House and oversaw its rehabilitation as the organization's new headquarters in the 1990s. And she established Heritage Housing Partners, whose mission is to rehabilitate historic homes to provide much needed affordable housing. And this is to name just a very small few. On top of all of that, Sue has taught and inspired countless preservation professionals, students, community activists, and city leaders about Pasadena's unique historic legacy and the importance of saving our historic places. And I just wanna say a personal thanks to Sue. She was my first boss and mentor when I started working in historic preservation. So I'm really thrilled to have the honor of presenting this award to her tonight. So on behalf of CPF and really on behalf of the entire preservation community in California, I wanna thank Sue for being an inspiration to us all <laughs> and congratulate her on an extraordinary career. And with that, uh, let's hear some tributes from Sue's friends and colleagues. I was just so impressed with her 
uh, the way she described the work that she did, the, the, the way she described uh, the work that Pasadena Heritage did, the successes that they had, the challenges that they had. I had always been interested in historic preservation, uh, but Sue was just so inspiring. And that moment sort of stuck with me. So I think the work of Pasadena Heritage and all the success they, they've had uh, is self-evident. So I don't know of any other historic preservation ad advocacy organization in, in any other city that has that kind of impact, uh, where what they say about uh, design and development, it, people really, really listen to. I think the, I would say the most challenging project was the preservation of the Herkimer Arms. Uh, so the Herkimer Arms was the only uh, apartment building ever designed by Charles and Henry Green. It was on the campus of Polish Seminary here in Pasadena. By some quirk, uh, the city of Pasadena had actually issued a demolition permit for this Green and Green uh, building. Sue uh, sort of enlisted me into her conspiracy to save this building. And really it was just following Sue's lead and going to talk to the owner of the property. So I don't think we would have ever gotten in the door except for Sue's leading, you know, knocking on that door. And we finally pulled it off. nicest, the kindest, the most well-mannered, the most poised, the most gracious person you will ever meet. When she, when, when she speaks up about any issue within the city, everyone pays attention. Uh, I, she's just a wonderful person, and that's just um, a part and parcel of who she is and what she does. is the most tactful woman I have ever met. Sue is energetic. She's compassionate. Dedicated. Kind and passionate. And then Sue came along in 1978 and really gave a boost to the organization. This really is a special opportunity for all of us tonight to celebrate a great leader. This was all part of the vision that Sue Mossman outlined to us 25 years ago. She cares and supports her staff. I had emergency gallbladder surgery a few years after I started. Sue went out and did my grocery shopping and brought it to my house. On behalf of the city, uh, I'd like to express my gratitude to Pasadena Heritage uh, and to Sue for what you have done for our city. The Beatles mean so much a part of my life that I thought maybe I would close tonight with um, words, not songs, from one of my favorite Beatles tunes. And as I say them, I want you all to think of your favorite historic building in Pasadena. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. <laughs> there will be the answer, let it be. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So uh, someone pointed out in the chat that now would be the time that we give Sue uh, a standing ovation, which of course we can't really do in person, but um, know Sue that we're all doing that for you from our, from our various locations. So um, with that, I'd like to welcome Sue to say a few words. Well, thank you, Christine. And I got a little teary eyed there, um, listening to all those nice things that people said. And I tried to think carefully about what my message should be to you all 
tonight in thanking you for this most prestigious honor. There are moments in your life that you'll never forget. And for me, this is one of those. This is a Lifetime Achievement Award, but I hope I have some lifetime left to keep up this work and work with all of you. I was thinking when Pasadena Heritage started, we coined the three A's of preservation, awareness, assistance, and action. And I think those all persist as good catchwords today. <clears throat> but as I thought of tonight, I began to think of P words. P as in Pasadena, P as in preservation, but wanting to say something inspirational to all the award winners tonight who worked so hard to bring such fabulous projects to light and to reality, to all of you in the audience here to salute the hard work of CPF, of Christine. Thank you, Christine. I'm so proud that your first job was at Pasadena Heritage. Um, and everyone who works throughout the state to do this work. I had a list of about 50 words, but then I was told to keep it short. So I've only chosen a few to share with you. And the first one is passion. I think everyone tonight expressed that it's passion that saw them through the challenges, the difficulties, and helped them overcome all of the minutia that makes a preservation project real. When times are tough, it's the passion that sees us through. The second one is perseverance. You have to stick with it. You have to find a new way. You have to overcome that obstacle to make your project or your dream a reality. <clears throat> I think we all share perseverance and it goes with the next one, which is patience. Some of our victories in Pasadena took the entire career of me and the entire life of Pasadena Heritage, culminating last year with the final defeat of the 710 freeway. But City Hall took forever. The Rose Bowl took forever. The Colorado Street Bridge took forever. And we're still fighting to save our Julia Morgan YWCA that's taken forever. So all of you know, patience is key. Partnerships, none of us do this alone. It's the people we work with, the people we meet, the organizations that come to mean so much to us, including in our case, CPF. Did you know CPF was actually founded in Pasadena once upon a time, just after Pasadena Heritage was founded we all work together. And I think building our future in preservation is gonna rely heavily on new partnerships and reaching out more broadly in our communities to uncover history and stories that have not yet been told. Parties, we have to stop occasionally and celebrate. Tonight is one of those occasions. This is hard work. This is 24 seven sometimes. And if we don't stop and enjoy the bright spots in our careers and our lives, we're really foolish. It's time to have a party. I hope everybody has a drink in their hand and this is a moment to celebrate. Our parties on the Colorado Street Bridge have become legendary, but we've had many of them and I hope there are many more to come. My last P word, I had to eliminate about 25 of them, I want you to know. So the last one for tonight is people. Truly preservation, while it's about beautiful historic buildings and sites and places, it all starts and ends with people. The architects and their vision and their brilliance to design beautiful buildings, the people who built them, the vision, and aspiration of the people who paid for them to be built, the people who work so hard to save them and preserve them, and all of the people in partnership who make our work happen 
are really the meaningful part of my life and preservation, the friendships I've made, the incredible staff I've had a chance to work with, the board members, the volunteers. I need to mention my two primary mentors, Claire Bogard and Bill Ellinger, who taught me much of what I know. Maybe I taught them a few things along the way, but knowing them is a learning experience and that continues. Um, and all of you, I hope you share with me the passion, the perseverance, the patience, the idea of partnership. I hope we have lots of good parties to share in the future. You are the preservation people. CPF, you bring us all together. So thank you for this most distinguished award. I'm humbled to be in the company of previous Lifetime Achievement Award winners and on to victory in the future. Pandemic is a P word that we would like to forget, but it's now becoming part of our history. We will overcome this and we will go on. And I just can't thank you enough for this extraordinary honor. Great, thank you so much, Sue. And I certainly join you in hoping that we're all together to party um, in person soon. So congratulations to Sue, congratulations to the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation and congratulations to all of our amazing winners this year. Um, I would like to turn it over to Cindy Heitzman for a few closing words. Thanks so much, everyone. Well, I really am here. <laughs> a little bit challenged with some of these controls. I want to thank everyone for being here this evening. And Sue, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Um, before we say goodnight, there are just a few parting comments I'd like to make. Um, we want to thank and thank each of you for joining us this evening and thank you for your support throughout the year. We truly could not do our work without you. The California Preservation Awards is one of two major fundraising events that we hold each year and it funds our education and advocacy programs throughout the year. Earlier this year, we made a commitment to do our part to provide education, connection, and to have some fun with a lighthearted look at preservation in California. Um, but there's also a very serious side to the work we do. Uh, the California Preservation Foundation is in the early stages of creating a grant program to support national register nominations by communities upper, underrepresented on the California and National Registers of Historic Places. Through an initial gift by a donor and the commitment of a leading university, we hope to increase the number of national register listings by engaging community organizations, college students, and donors to support this important work. The events of the past year have brought attention to our need to recognize historic and cultural sites from diverse communities of color across California. The National Park Service recognizes this in their underrepresented community grant program. And the California Office of Historic Preservation has funded research to facilitate the nomination of these resources to the National and California Registers. By doing this, we are taking an important step to preserve the sites that tell the story of all Californians and will help next generations of preservationists. We hope you'll support our work by being a member or a donor, and we hope that you'll continue to enjoy our programs. We thank you again for being with us, and I'd like to invite the co-chairs, Christine, John, and Chris back onto our virtual stage here to say goodnight. We couldn't have done this without them, Hey. Where is everyone? <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Hi, everybody. Thank you. And John, Bill, Andrew, thank you all for doing what you've done. Um, so we'll see you again next year, hopefully in person. But if not, we'll keep going at this. Thanks again, everyone. I'm just a lonesome traveler, a great historical bum. Highly educated from history I come I built the rock of ages It was in the year of one That's about the biggest thing Man has ever done 
I was in the Garden of Eden, it was in the year of two. Join the Apple Pickers Union, I always paid my dues. I'm the one who signed the contract to raise the rising sun. That's about the biggest thing the man has ever done. I was straw boss on the pyramid and the Tower of Babel too. I opened up the ocean, let the migrant children through. Fought a million battles and I never lost one. And that's about the biggest thing the man's ever done. I was in the revolution when we set this country free It was me and a couple of engines that dumped the Boston Tea I won the Battle of Valley Forge and the Battle of Bully Run And that's about the biggest thing the man has ever done I'm just a lonesome traveler, great historical bone Highly educated from history I come I built the Rock of Ages It was in the year of one And that's about the biggest thing That man has ever done